So here I've got the Google Pixel 6 and here I have the iPhone 13. These phones are actually in relatively similar categories. Now I know I'm a bit late to the party here, but I'm gonna be putting these phones head to head and comparing the camera systems from the point of view of a working photographer. I'm mainly gonna be focusing on photo shots straight out of camera, as obviously this is what most people tend to shoot with their phones. Kicking things off with the main rear facing camera on both phones, this is obviously the lens that most people will use the majority of the time. In terms of megapixels and focal lengths, the iPhone shoots on a 12 megapixel camera with a focal length of 26 millimeters, whereas the Google Pixel 6 shoots on a 24 millimeter focal length camera with a 50 megapixel sensor that pixel bins down to a 12 megapixel shot. So slightly different techniques, the Pixel camera is a tiny, tiny bit wider than the iPhone, but don't let any of those spec differences fool you because these cameras particularly are very, very close in performance. And just wait, that's not necessarily true when it comes to other parts of these phones, which we'll talk about later. Both of these cameras perform really, really well. Like I genuinely don't even think that most of the time you'd be able to tell them apart if you didn't know the sort of specific characteristics to look for in each photograph. I think overall the shots on the iPhone actually came out slightly brighter and more vibrant which did surprise me slightly having used the Pixel 6 for a good few months. I thought the iPhone was also slightly better balanced. At face value though the bottom line is on the rear camera both of these are just great. There are important differences which we will discuss in a second but you definitely won't be disappointed with either of these cameras. When it comes to the ultra wide this is where the differences actually really do start to creep in. Most notably, the iPhone is actually a bit wider than the Pixel 6. Both phones use a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, but importantly, the iPhone is actually a 13 millimeter focal length, whereas the Pixel 6 is a 16 millimeter. The times where you're wanting to shoot on your wide lens on a smartphone camera, chances are you're actually wanting to literally include as much field of view as possible. And that extra three millimeters might not sound like a lot, but it actually does make a decent amount of difference. If you're shooting wides, that's a relatively significant difference. And I have to admit, I way prefer shooting wides on the iPhone than I do compared to the Pixel, because the Pixel just simply does not have the field of view that sometimes I want. In terms of actual performance, the ultra wides do perform well in photo mode, with the biggest differences really happening in terms of the dynamic range and the sharpness of the photos. Both phones use a variation of HDR tech to make their phones perform really well in harder dynamic range situations and both do perform amazingly. If I had to really push for sort of like a what's better between the two, in my experience, the Pixel does look like it includes a little bit more dynamic range in shots, but that's not necessarily always a good thing. If we take this shot here, you can see how much shadow detail is being retained here in the cow on the Pixel 6, whereas on the iPhone, this is what it looks like. And in my opinion, it actually looks a little bit better on the iPhone because it's almost like closer to what it would look like in real life. Here's another example here. You can obviously see that the focus is uh, on the highlights of the sky outside the window here. So here is the iPhone shot and then this one is the Pixel shot. Personally, I actually prefer the iPhone. It's worth noting that the Pixel does have a shadow controller, which lets you tweak this pretty easily. So here's a shot in the same setting where I was actually trying to replicate somewhat kind of how the iPhone exposes this scene. But overall, I still feel like the Pixel actually includes more data, but that might not always be better. If you guys have watched my Google Pixel 6 review, you know that one of my biggest complaints with the phone is just how artificial sometimes the photos can come out looking. And that's for two reasons, really. One is the dynamic range, which we've already talked about, but the other is photo sharpening or camera sharpening in general. And if you take photos side by side between these two phones, the iPhone on the left and the Pixel on the right, the iPhone definitely sharpens its photos less. One of the best ways to combat this on the Pixel is to shoot RAW, where you can actually pull the sharpness down a bit in post, but this is obviously a lot of faff and kind of defeats the convenience for me of shooting on a phone. You can obviously use third-party app to do a similar thing on the iPhone and get access to those RAW files, but an important note is you don't get access to Apple Pro War functionality on the iPhone 13, and you need to pray for the Pro versions if you want access to that. Again, this kind of really comes back to, in my opinion, the iPhone taking overall just more natural photographs. Yo guys, so this obviously isn't the dedicated reason for the video, but I thought this would be useful to include a couple of tests in here. So this is the rear facing camera um, on the iPhone 13. This is now the rear facing camera on the iPhone 13. Obviously the lighting is like amazing, absolutely amazing. Very, very lucky with uh, the weather here. Um, it's also a decent to audio test. You'll be able to sound what the audio sounds like. Here is the front facing camera on the iPhone 13. 
you can uh, see what that looks like. Again, obviously the lighting is very good. It's not like a low light situation, which is sometimes where these phones struggle. But now let's switch over to the Pixel 6. So here is the Pixel 6. This is first of all the uh, wide lens. Um, so we're starting off in the ultra wide uh, and then we will switch over now to the standard. This is the standard uh, rear facing camera, the standard 26 millimeter focal length, I believe it is. Definitely a bit of wind here to fork over this way. And then finally, this is the front facing camera setup on the Pixel 6. So hopefully this should give you a really good sort of spread for what all of those cameras look like. So that's a few examples of the video comparison across all lenses. Now this isn't a video centric review, but I don't think anyone can argue with me here that the iPhone completely just blows the Pixel out of the water. For some reason, I don't know why this is, but the Pixel footage is like insanely noisy. All of this footage was 4K, 30 frames a second. And like I say, the footage down here is kind of really pretty awful from the Pixel. Whereas the iPhone just looks totally clean. Like literally look at these side by side. There is absolutely no comparison. It was so bright. There's no need whatsoever to have a ton of artificial light in this shot. If it was really dark, I might be able to understand this, but for some reason, the pixel just made it really noisy. The lenses are also pretty obvious here in terms of difference. The wide on the iPhone is also clearly a bit wider, as you can obviously see, which I'm a big fan of, especially if you film yourself in situations just like this one. The front facing cameras really are a big step apart too. The rear facing camera cameras are good, but when you put the front facing cameras side by side, this footage just isn't close at all. So if video is really important to you, I would definitely score the iPhone significantly higher than the Pixel 6. I do overall think that the main cameras perform both so solidly that there isn't a massive difference to choose between them. And sometimes the reason we change phones or choose different phones is for like the overall experience as opposed to anything else. Sometimes where this is super true is on the iPhone, the camera app is insanely fast, responsive, and reliable, which is obviously really important to me. I was testing here the shutter lag on both phones. I had this paraglider go over the top of me, so I was just like shooting like crazy, tapping away like an absolute madman. And as you can see on both devices, the Pixel held up well for a little while, but it wasn't long before it actually completely locked up. Like I couldn't even press the shutter button. The shutter button is completely grayed out, whereas the iPhone is still going super strong without slowing down. And that is genuinely really impressive. I think to wrap up, my overall feeling about these phone cameras is that neither of these are going to disappoint you. I said it originally in my Pixel 6 review, it is a brilliant camera system. But the iPhone 13, in my opinion, is a more complete overall package. The Pixel does stand up to the competition, but only really with the main rear facing lens, which genuinely is brilliant. This is where the iPhone and the Pixel are closest, but with hardly anything to choose between the two lenses, it kind of comes down to whether you prefer the photo style from the Pixel or the photo style from the iPhone. Where the iPhone, in my opinion, pulls ahead is definitely the front facing camera along with the ultra wide. From my testing, particularly in video, the iPhone is just steps ahead with both of these lenses. With photos, things are a little bit closer on the ultra wide particularly, uh, but on the front facing camera, this isn't even close at all. However, that is not the only reason. And if you would like to see a full list of why I switched to the iPhone from the Pixel 6, you can check that video out here.